Hey, 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 how's it going, do it yourselfers? Today we're gonna to talk about why when a fuse on your car blows, you don't wanna just throw another one back in there. All right, now for those of you that are not subscribers to my channel, in my previous video where we did the diagnosis of why the power windows on the right front and right rear of this car don't work, we decided to check for power. Now, the best place is usually the fuse, but since on this car the fuse is behind the glove box, we decided to pick an easier spot, which was at the corresponding switch for these power windows and then when we pulled out this switch for the right front window as you can see we saw these damaged and fried wires which meant that these wires had shorted out and probably blown our fuse so today i pulled the panels off to gain access to the fuse for these power windows and here's what i found yeah here this is the fuse for the right front and right rear power windows they have you know the right side on one fuse and then this is the fuse for the left front and left rear power windows here's what they did since this fuse blew when that short happened they wired in this fuse right here now i don't know if you guys can see but this is a 30 amp fuse i'm not sure about the factory fuse um you know it's possible that it's also a 30 amp since two power windows are running off of this fuse all right so it looks like the first time that wire shorted out and whoever was trying to fix this problem pulled this panel off figured out that the fuse is blown since they couldn't get their hands on a factory fuse, decided to wire in this aftermarket fuse down here and go from there. And that's exactly what you don't want to simply do. Whenever you're faced with a blown fuse, you don't want to just simply replace that fuse because fuses don't blow on their own. They're there to protect the circuit against shorts that would cause a spike in the current. So, you know, the circuit is designed by the wire size, the connectors, the load to withstand a certain amount of current or amp draw. So, you know, if uh, there's a short and that circuit is drawing way more amps than it's designed for, if you don't have a fuse, you're gonna melt the wires, you're gonna damage the load or the component that's inside that circuit and etc. So that's why, you know, they put a fuse in there and when it blows, you need to make, check and make sure there's not a short in that circuit. And of course you can have a short a couple of different ways. First, the components, in this case would be the motor for these power windows could have an internal short causing the fuse to blow. You could have a short in the wiring. You could have a power wire that has 12 volts to a short to a wire that's grounded. Those two short against one another, that would blow the fuse. Also, on most cars, the chassis on these cars is grounded. Which means the negative side of your battery, by the way of a thick cable, is connected and bolted into the chassis, the metal chassis of your car. And that's so if the manufacturer chooses to, let's say they have a component or a load that requires power and ground in the back of the car, somewhere. They can simply just run one wire carrying power and then ground that component onto the chassis. They'll have power and ground there so that way they don't have to run a, another wire also for the ground as well. And as far as how you check for a short to ground, you do it with this guy, your test light. So what you want to do first is to connect your test light to the power side of your battery. We have a dead battery here so I'm actually connecting it to these clamps from our jumper box. And then you want to come to where the fuse is. You want to remove the fuse and then you want to check for ground. Now this is going to be a little bit tricky, I'll explain later, but you know, you should not have, on our setup, we should not have a ground at either of these pins. Power comes through one, through the fuse, out the other. So we, you know, test one, nothing, the other one, nothing. So we don't have a short here right now, which means this fuse is probably good. We're going to put this back in, back on the battery side, just to verify our finding. We'll switch our test light to the negative side of the battery. And if you're wondering, I'm using a chassis ground for the negative side of our jumper box right there. Then back out here on the fuse, we check one side, there's power. There's power on both sides. So power is indeed flowing through this fuse and it's good. Now if you want to find out which side is bringing in power from the battery, you pull out this fuse and then you check the pins. So yeah, this side is bringing in power. Without the fuse, we should not have power on the other side. And since, you know, there, we don't. So this side is coming from the battery. This is going to the component or the load. Now you might be asking, hey, what gives? How's that fuse not blown and you have a short? Well, the problem is, like I said earlier, they kept, you know, replacing this fuse every time it blew. Now this was probably, I'm assuming, an intermittent problem where, you know, the wires were just barely touching. Once they would touch, the, the fuse would blow. So they pulled these off, throw in another fuse. They'd be good for another few days or weeks or hours. And the problem is every time you replace the fuse and those strands of wire, because you know, when they short, they don't, you don't get a complete short. You know, you don't get a full contact between the two wires or the wire and the chassis. You know, a couple of strands are hitting one another. When they short, sometimes if you keep replacing this fuse, you're losing 
you're overheating and losing a couple of strands of wire. So you lose a couple of strands, you throw another fuse, a couple of days down the line, they hit each other again, you lose a couple of more strands, throw another fuse, you keep doing this, eventually you're gonna be faced. What we have here is, which is basically, you know, none of the strands are connected to one another anymore. They have completely burnt off. Now granted, when I pulled this out, some of them were still connected to one another. Just, I mean, I'm talking just barely a few strands and you can obviously see the evidence of overheating on these wires and whatnot. So yeah, you know, if you keep popping that fuse in and go from there, you'll be faced with this. All right, so allow me to try to make sense of this on this wiring diagram. So here's our fuse. Here's where the wire we checked that had power that's coming from our power window relay to be specific, which itself gets its power from the, the battery. Then we checked for ground here. We found out that in our case, for the reasons I explained, we don't have ground right now, short to ground right now, but we probably did the first time the fuse blew if we were to check it then. Now, the idea is if you don't check, if you check here, you don't see a short to ground, that could mean that the short could be in other parts of the circuit. So you basically want to split up the circuit and then check for ground at each split. So, you know, you would go to the switch, check for ground there. You know, you could check this wire <laughs> and on this setup. If you have, if you check here and you have a short or here and you have a short, that short can be in this wire to this switch, also this wire to the other switch. So it's kind of complicated, a little bit complicated on this circuit, but you know, the idea is to split up the circuit to try to find the short, narrow it down and then go from there. Now, the other thing I mentioned is that, you know, you could have a ground here if you check for ground for a short, you could get a ground here if your component is, you know, is grounded to the chassis. This window motor is a poor example of what I'm trying to say, but the idea is to make sure you remove the ground from the circuit that you're trying to test for a short to ground, whether it's grounded to the chassis or it's grounded at the connector, where it's, you know, from that connector goes to the ECM or whatever. You want to disconnect that connector and isolate the power side and then test for a short to ground. So I hope that made sense, but if you didn't, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell notification because we'll be covering this more in depth in the future. But now I'm gonna remove this cover and try to get a closer look. And to do that, I'm gonna first remove these ashtrays here. And then there are two Phillips head screws for each housing for the ashtrays, and we're gonna remove them next. And here's the last one. There we go. All right, next we need to remove the remaining switches. This one, hopefully we can do this without breaking any of them. There we go. Now our master switch, which basically cuts off ground to all the other switches, seems to be a bit more difficult to get out. And I don't wanna pry on this too much because I don't have a replacement for this. I have a replacement for the other switches, but not for this. So actually we're gonna try to leave this in here for now and remove this last Phillips head screws. Push these guys through and see if we can get this out. And it looks like the connector for the master switch is in the way. Yep, got it. Now we should be able to get this out of the way. These are the brackets for the ashtrays. All right, here's a closer look with that cover in the way. Here's the switch for the right front where we have the damage. And from up top, this, this bracket looked like a metal bracket. I thought this is what they were rubbing against, but no, this is plastic. It's plastic, it's actually broken on one side. But it looks like these wires here were actually rubbing against this edge, this plastic edge right here. This is, this is where it's located on the panel. So and these two wires were probably sticking out on this side. Throughout the vibration, throughout the years, they're probably just rubbing against that. They shorted, you know, the, the insulation wore out and they shorted. it. And here's what's remaining of those two wires right down here. Now the problem is we should have, even with this problem here, we should have power to this right rear window switch because as I showed you on the wiring diagram, power comes and it, you know, it splits and you know one supplies power to this switch, one supplies power to this switch, but since we don't have power here, that means that somewhere uh, you know, we have that, that wire has also damage that supplies power to both of these. And I'm hoping that wire is in this wiring harness right below here. So what I'm gonna do next is to undo these uh, zip ties and you know, try to open this and try to find that wire. And, and we have to do this anyway because we have to get back to where there's good wiring to try to fix this issue. So yeah, first this guy, then this guy. Oh God, it's a mess in there. Yeah, that's probably where our problem is. Yeah, don't keep on popping in fuses when your fuses blow. And funny thing is, this is on the lucky side. This is fairly easily accessible to fix. And it looks like, you know, we have only two or three maybe 
burnt wires, but you know, if you do this and your problem is in a difficult to get to place and it affects drivability, especially, you know, your car is gonna be out of commission, fixing it is gonna be difficult, you're gonna have to take it to someone that knows what they're doing and all that fun stuff. So yeah, don't keep on popping in fuses when your fuses blow. All right, so it's been about half an hour later and I spent some time taking all the electrical tape and stuff off of these wires and it's a disaster. We need to repair more than two or three wires, but the good news is I found where that split goes. It goes right here. This is where it comes off, it comes from that fuse right here. It splits off into two. <laughs> There's one wire remaining, but the main wire that brings in the power from the fuse, it's still in good, it's still in good condition. But the other two wires are damaged on this. Of course, the two wires that go here are damaged. But not just that, there's damage to other wires that were in this harness right here. These, these wires are for the, the other switches or the, the rear switch. There's some damage to other wires that go to this side, which looks to be for the left side of this car. And, you know, I still haven't looked at everything, but I'm sure there's further damage. I probably have to remove more of this electrical tape, you know, inspect every wire carefully fix and replace those. Now, one other thing that came to my mind is that on this setup, where you have a 30 amp fuse, all the wiring should be this 12 gauge wire to, to support that 30 amps. Now, some of these wires, however, like these smaller ones are 16 gauge, it seems. And 16 gauge wire can only handle up to 17 or 18 amps roughly. Whereas, you know, the 12 gauge can handle up to 25 or 26 amps, actually, actually, if I'm not mistaken. But anyway, this is a poor design on Jaguar's part. Now, granted, on each circuit where they're using the 16 gauge wire, now that circuit is for one window, so that's likely to only, uh, you know, use up the up to 17 amps. But since the entire circuit is only protected by a 30 amp or a 25 or 30 amp fuse, uh, you know, they should have, you know, they should have figured, hey, if there's a short, if you're protecting against a short and an entire circuit is on a 25 or 30 amp fuse, all the wiring should be able to handle that now. And they didn't, so, and it's shorted. And then they kept on popping in new fuses and this happened. So yeah, when it comes to diagnosing electrical issues with your car, you wanna make sure you do it right the first time. Otherwise, things like this can happen or even worse. Now, the good news is if you don't know how to do it right the first time, all you need to do is to subscribe to this channel, give this video a thumbs up, hit that bell notification, and also check out these other videos on this side of the screen in the suggestion box, and there'll be more similar videos on electrical issues coming up in the future as well. All right, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.